yesterday, sorry, two days ago, I wrote a post for uh, the passing of one of my dogs and her name was Lala and she's got a sister called Brianna, they're very identical, so Brianna has a white foot. And uh, Lala was the like fifth dog to come here. So for me it was very powerful and profound that she left because as time progresses of course my dogs are dying here and I have so many it's very painful, I'll be very clear with you, very, very painful that these dogs I've had for five or six years are just dying around me. But, and the reason it's painful is somehow it's comforting that they saw things from the beginning. They saw this place when it was just land without any fences or anything, you know, they, they were here with me. And for whatever reason, God brought them uh, to share that part of my life with me and, and I thankfully to share the entirety of their lives with them. And in that post I said admittedly sometimes I'm closer to the dogs than I am the staff and the children and there's a reason for it and I said in the same post I said the dogs you know they don't come with any agenda there's no trickery in them there's no lies there's no deceit there's, there's no need for anything they just want to share in your presence. Uh, and I want to share in theirs and they're always happy to see me. They're always willing to greet me without an agenda, without a, something inside that they want. Whereas people are much more likely to do that. And the reason is because people have a carnal mind. And the reason humans sometimes do get closer to dogs than, than other humans is they see when they are not in their carnal mind themselves, they're experiencing something so pure and so beautiful. And it's coming from another sentient being that's not human. Now I said in there, you know, in the Bible, God was asked his name only one time and, and he said his name one time. He said, I am. Now, that is a powerful thing to remember because the reason we are so drawn to dogs, why they have this loving, healing energy that is so beautiful to bring to our lives and our families is they have no agenda. And the fact they have no agenda is because they have no carnal mind. And the fact they have no carnal mind means that our dogs simply express the I amness of who they are in a much more easy and deeper way than what we humans do. And sometimes you'll come across a human and they have a certain twinkle in their eye. They have a certain shine, a certain light. And they have a joy in them and you feel it. And some people get addicted to it and they want to be around those people because they don't understand how this person has that. But the reason that person has it is they've predominantly become dominant in the spirit and not the carnal mind, not the flesh. And it awakens a vibrance in you because what it does, it awakens the I am that you are. And when God said I am, the idea of I am is a a concept to me it's a focus on the way energy can be expressed and and as a dog expresses its I amness without any concern any any agenda just expressing itself in the most part then it is very at union and one with its I amness and when we abandon our carnal mind and we come back and we find the antidote to the fact we developed a carnal mind, then we embrace that I amness too. And you'll meet the odd person where you feel it. And what you're feeling is God. Because when a person is whole and they have no agenda and no secret, they become like a dog. They do things, but from a space of their position of I amness. A dog's I amness will be different to a human's I amness. I've watched my dogs here at night. Sometimes lots of insects come to the lights on the house and the puppies will toy with them and play with them and I try to stop them but it happens. You come and you find them, they've dismembered a praying mantis or something, you know, they've pulled it apart and it's horrible and that praying mantis suffered terribly in the pain in its body. However, the puppy had no malice in it. It was just expressing its I amness in a very clear and, and playful way. It didn't even comprehend the pain it was doing. It didn't have the knowledge of good and evil. You see, we have the knowledge of good and evil. We have it. And this becomes problematic to us, but also becomes a great blessing to us, I would say as well. Because with that knowledge of good and evil 
came our knowledge to expand upon the horrendous way of life that we would have lived here without medication, etc. I mean, we've got history records of what it was like without antibiotics, when syphilis would eat the face of a person it infected. It's just horrendous. You're better off killing yourself than allowing it. But it existed. And I can't imagine a world where we didn't develop to make our lives more comfortable, where we didn't have invention to invent glass and nets or things can't come in and bite me while I'm sleeping, to, to invent a soft mattress to sleep on, to invent medication, to invent painkillers to relieve the suffering of people who get sick. This comes from our knowledge of good and evil, our carnal mind, our intellect. But we have to find the balance between that carnal mind and intellect because we have got it and it's not going to go anywhere and our I amness, and our I amness is separate from it. And the I amness you see in a dog is always pure and constant. And what you feel when you love them is God, because God is the I am state of each living being. Now, I'm not saying it makes dog a God. I'm not saying, and there's no play on words there, and I'm not saying that all that being spilled is just nothing that I, I don't feel anyway. Um, but it's not about us being God either, as I've said in a recent video, where I said, are we God? And I, I clearly explained that. Then what it's about is us in our I am state is where we come to the point of no conflict. And when we come to the point of no conflict, we come to the point of just being love, as I also mentioned in a recent video. And when you can just be love, then you are just the I am that you are. And that is how I'm referring to I amness. If that's even a term I can use is a dog expresses its I amness with, with great ease because it has no carnal mind. And we humans, we have to get rid of our carnal mind so we can meet God in our I am space. For that is his name. And when you speak it, you see it. If you say to someone physically, someone says to you, what is God's name? And you reply, I am. That's what the Bible has just done to you when it does this I am moment. What is God's name? And you must, if you, are, if you have read the Bible you, and, and you, you want to say that those words have any truth, or if you're going to respond using the Bible, then you must reply and say, God's name. If someone says, what is God's name? All you can say in reply is, I am. And when you realize that, it's not you saying that you're God, it's saying that in your I am state is where you will commune with the greater God. God is dealing with more complexity around me than I can comprehend. He has profound sacred wisdom that I can't comprehend. Perhaps he made me sick to avoid something terrible in the future. I don't know. I can't see it all. And that's why you have to have a little bit of trust in God. But when you enter your I am state, it's much easier to have that trust. And you see it. You see it with your children. You see it with your pets. And you can see it in yourself if you have not already. Or you have at least seen it in others. Because you see that twinkle and that smile in the corner of their eye. And you know that person right now knows how to swim in their own state of I am. I hope that makes sense. I love you all.